and return.
We'll now call uh, this City of Indianola um, study session to order. Uh, our first item tonight is an annual update from Catch to Win with Greg Edwards. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. Oh, good evening. City Manager, beloved guests. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thank you for being here. Treasurer's here to make sure I don't walk away with any money. I say. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, pleasure to be in front of you and give you our annual report from your pension visitors bureau. Go over just a few little basic things. Um, how we're funded primarily through hotel motel tax. Travel to the metro area, they spend dollars a lot of different ways restaurants, shopping, attractions, cultural arts, all kinds of great things. They stay overnight in a hotel, check out, they pay an additional 7% hotel motel tax. Of which we received two sevenths of that, 15 of the metro. The hotel then pays that money to the state. The state then returns the money to the cities. The city reimburses us two sevenths, about two sevenths, seven states with the city. Now we recently subscribed to a new um, organization called Arrivalist that can track visitors where they're coming from. Um, where they're spending their dollars, all kinds of great things. And they estimated last year we had 5.8 million visitors to the metro area, uh, average length of stay, staying two point eight nights while they're here. Top 10 uh, trips by origin by state. Uh, Iowa, no surprise, they're our number one feeder of visitors, followed by Minnesota, Illinois, Nebraska, uh, or excuse me, Missouri, Wisconsin, and some outlying states, Texas, California, Colorado. So you see our marketing is getting well beyond site borders, which is great news for all your <laughs> Top points of interest you travel to um, in order are Des Moines International Airport, Jordan Creek Town Center, the Iowa Event Center, Port Avenue District, Mid American Energy Recplex, the new Recplex of West Des Moines, Iowa State Fairgrounds, East Village. Three Meadows and Adventureland, up to lots of interest. Occupancy around the metro. Uh, we're almost back to uh, pre pandemic levels so back in 2019. Um, last year's level, we ended the year at 55.3%. See, the average daily rate in hotel rooms has dramatically gone up, though, as well. Probably have experienced that if you've done any travel yourselves. Um, I also have with me tonight our Vice President of Sales and Services, Trina Flack. She's going to talk to you a little bit about sales conventions and sports. And Brock Conrad, who's from a suburb of Indianola, called Lacona. <laughs> <laughs> okay. big suburb. Brock's our Vice President of Marketing, and he'll chat with you a little bit. Trina? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, so last year, we... Um, at 332 conventions and events, we break our conventions up into two categories, definites and assists. Assists are things that happen regardless of whether we play a role in booking them or securing them for the community or not. So things like um, the Iowa State Fair would be an assist. So um, events that we provide services to, but don't aren't responsible for. So 332 encompasses that entire number. 176 of those were because of our sales efforts. 209 events for just a handful of events um, coming up in 2023. Like Greg mentioned, we are we're back. It feels really strong um, with quite a few major events on the books. We did NBA events basketball um, last month. Gosh, is it April already? Last month. I'm looking forward to Drake Relays here in a few weeks, um, a handful of others, the Des Moines Disc Golf Challenge, which is held here in Indianola, um, Ironman 70.3, World Sport Expo again, the Society will be here this summer, um, and our big one really for the year is AAU Junior Olympics, which happens in July, brings in 14,000 athletes over a 10-day span. Um, they'll use... Drake University, um, CDM, the Walmart YMCA, and the West Des Moines Reflex are there. There, um, and I'll touch on it just since I'm here. NCAA is uh, 
We were the first year of a four-year bid cycle on that one. So we bid on events 23 through 26. That We'll start that process again um, this fall and really submit bids next spring, so about a year from now. And we look at everything from Division One to Division Three across all sports. So um, we'll go back and look at what we can do at Simpson. To Brock. Hi. So this first slide here, and I won't spend too much time on it, but it's just kind of a year in review for some of the marketing and uh, media efforts that we and my team did uh, this past year. Um, you see there at the top left, uh, media and PR impressions. So um, Alex Wilson, she's on my team. She's our um, media and PR manager. She does a great job of doing outreach to media members, getting uh, Greater Des Moines region uh, put into um, publications. And you can see some of the major ones there's on the side, Axio, Sports Travel, uh, The Hill. So those are uh, media efforts that she gets in front of us that we don't have to pay for. The value equivalency of those efforts was over $2.1 million. So she did a very good job there. Um, social media, quick overview there. That's our, a lot of our organic traffic. So beside our paid efforts, um, almost 5,000 new followers, over 27 million impressions. So we got that many impressions getting uh, greater going out in front of those people. And over 1.1 million engagements. So those people are actually interacting with us, going to our website. And you see there on the top right, uh, over 1.5 million website visits to catch Des Moines this past fiscal year, which was the most that we've ever had. Uh, really designed. People are excited to travel again. Content we're creating is uh, working and people are engaging it and visiting the website to get more information. A uh, quick slide here, just uh, a little bit of a brag for the team and then just catch Des Moines in general here. Some awards we've won the past year. Top one there would be the uh, meetings today, uh, we won the Best Mid-America uh, CDB. That was a nice award we received for that. Uh, PRSA uh, for Public Relations, a Merit Award for the hype video released uh, September. We recently won three Addy Awards uh, with the Coin Chapter. Uh, that's the American Advertising Foundation. And then lastly there, this is just a couple weeks ago, but Iowa Tourism Conference, we won two different awards for that. Outstanding promotional material for the Catch Des Moines Visitor's Guide an outstanding niche market initiative um, for a sports hype video. Um, some specific Indian oil marketing partner uh, highlights here in the next couple of slides. One, uh, we have 32 Indian oil partners. Uh, a couple other highlights there would be Des Moines Metro Opera. We're a sponsor with them in both summer and winter programs, uh, partnering with them. National Bloom Classic uh, is a very big partner of ours. We work really close with them on several different things, but we are a VIP sponsor for that event. Uh, Co-op advertising partner, and then we do a lot of other niche stuff there. As you can kind of see, those are kind of some screenshots of some stuff that we have specifically with Bloom Classic. So that's on social <laughs> videos that we run, broadcast TV, connected TV, etc. cetera, um, social media. I can go a little bit into some specific things also with this. So 37 mentions and 29 newsletters. We featured Indian oil and Indian oil businesses in the past year. National Balloon Classic, we actually featured in our TV commercial. I think we spent nearly $300,000 um, locally throughout the Midwest and even some different national buys when we're considering connected TV, uh, getting that messaging in front of pe people. Uh, five different videos for social media and pre-roll ads. Eight blogs, six TV and radio features, and then four different visitor itineraries that we featured in Emola. Um, and like I mentioned, all those are getting featured in over a $1.1 million advertising spend last year. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different things, but then also a lot of different mediums used. I won't go through all of them, but you can see here it's a wide spectrum of mediums, broadcast TV, connected TV, so people that are cutting or cutting streaming. Paid social media marketing, our organic efforts, which I talked about earlier, paid search, radio, the list goes on, but we have a wide gamut of things that we're doing marketing wise. I think Greg said we, we're actually going to show that commercial that features National Bloom Classic, but I don't know if it's working or not, but I'll try it on the next slide. But here is just a couple of testimonials that we wanted to include one from the Des Moines Metro Opera <laughs> and one from the National Classic. 
again, great partners of ours, uh, especially Stacy. Um, been working with her for a long time. Really fun. Thanks for that. It's really good for their marketing. Ours, man, we collaborate very well. I will go ahead and see if this commercial works. Maybe it is. <laughs> Great commercial. <laughs> yeah, so, Did you guys yeah. release that commercial? Um, it was maybe a little bit over a year ago. So we had that in the market. We still use it. It's actually the video that's featured on our uh, it's featured on our homepage for our website too. Not only is it in our advertising, but it's also uh, it's also on the homepage. It's our main homepage hero image. So it plays when people come to our home. Okay. Even I could not. After this play from there. Oh, no, that's not there. playing. No. We'll, send, we'll send it out, but it's, it's in the middle of the commercial and it has a nice feature there. Social actual uh, visitors that we found or social media that we featured in the video and stuff too that experienced the balloon bath. Um, also, with us, I apologize, is um, our prize of Indianola. Lisa, you ever hang out at the corner sundry? You could probably run into her. So we drug her here. Do I have to go? Yes. No, you don't have to. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. That, but I, Greg, I, I know that uh, there's been a few things that. Um, if I do to work with on some free um, advertising for some of the projects and things that have gone on in the community and, and kind of brought to the attention of the staff a little bit, some of the internet issues and a few of those kinds of things. I guess my real question for you and, and the team is, um, how do you suggest that we better interact with your team to make sure that we get all of the upcoming events that we have here in Indianola, as well as proper items on your calendars and all of those kinds of things. How do you suggest? I think, you know, I think number one, your biggest cheerleaders over here is Amanda. She's kind of changing the world, as you well know. Mm -hmm. Changed my life dramatically. You know, when I heard the news of what she was up to. Um, anyway, so that I think that's your best resource. Um, we, we do work closely with a lot of the chambers throughout the metro and we'll pretty much take, we tell people, put your stuff on our calendar, um, staff reviews it to make sure it's appropriate to be on the calendar and make sure it's a visitor acclimated in a way. Um, so I think that's a great step. If you guys want to throw something in, I don't know if you do city newsletters or I'm sure you do city communications, you can throw that out there in that as well. Anything that we can do, and you all know that it's we're a big organization representing a lot of big stuff, big recreation centers and convention centers and things like that. Um, and, and we don't want you to feel just left out in the open. I mean, anything we can do help do it feed. You know, the good senator and I have a great relationship with this golf. We can't play where the darn, but um, we're supporting that event and any other stuff that we can support. That's what we're all about. Appreciate that. I, I, I don't know if there's any, I'm sure Amanda's got all the contacts and I know we've on our budget have a communications person hired sometime this year yet. And so we're gonna have a communications person that will work closely with Amanda and everybody in the community. So I just, I, I think that that's important that we figure out a way to partner and make that happen. So. It is, you know, another, another big point is your fairly new athletic director at Simpson. He's been there over a year now. Um, previous team over there wasn't too gung-ho about bringing other stuff in. Obviously, it's more work for their staff and things like that. He's very well open. Our sports team has met with him and talk about D3, track and field, and different yeah. stuff like that. We cool. It's very good. And I think, I hope that you'll stick around to kind of hear our update from Amanda. Sure. Because part of our initiative in financing more money to our Chamber was to use Vanda as our kind of our spokesperson and to do that heavy lifting for us because we don't have a communications director. So right now we're kind of leaning a lot on her, um, 
but that's why we've invested more financially. So I feel like we're in the same vision. Um, and I hope that that kind of helps in this transition time right now. And sure. I'm sure she's always still going to be um, loud and proud for any and all, even when we have a communications director. So yeah. I think Jason might have gotten the commercial up. I like it. Thank you, Jason. All right. We really appreciate you all coming down here. Welcome to the morning. The commute, and uh, thank you so much. I would, I would say one last thing. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on this. I, I should have picked your brain ahead of time. I was in Topeka, Kansas, and we uh, stayed overnight at a uh, hotel there in Topeka. And this was probably three weeks ago or so. And uh, so I had my hotel, you know, it was like $110 for the room, technically. By the time I got done paying all the taxes, there was a Topeka tax, there was a state of Kansas tax, there was another some kind of Kansas tax. It was $141. It was like $31 in taxes that, that they managed to take care of. It was, has Guest Morning talked anything about maybe trying to look with work? Tourism and those kinds of things and through those kinds of issues? We have. Um, in fact, we're, we're kind of doing a study right now called TID, which is a tourism improvement district, mm -hmm. which has started throughout the country. It started in California. And now there's 200 and some odd cities that do this. And it's, it's really a it's a unique thing because it's, it's managed by hoteliers. So Indianola, for instance, you have two hotels here. They could come together and say, yes, we want to do a TID district in Indianola. Set that up. We we're working. Um, we've hired a consulting firm. The Quad Cities is is doing it along with us. Um, they're looking at state legislature right now to see do we need to tweak some image or whatever to make that happen. And then, then essentially, what it does, the hotels can then say charge a dollar a room. They could charge a tag. You know, they don't call it a tax. It's a tourism improvement district. But um, they charge really whatever they want. It's voluntary. They would then operate it. And, you know, Amanda or us, whoever could go to them and say, hey, we want to bring in X event. Um, would you support it? We need $2,000 or whatever. Would you support it? So there are those kind of mechanisms. We are on the low end. We know that. We look at our competitive analysis every year. We're on the way low end of taxes and checkout rate and all that stuff. Omaha is up to, I think, about 21% when you check out of a hotel with all their little things they have on there. So I traveled everywhere or retired in 2020. I traveled everywhere in the country somewhere every week flying out of Des Moines. And, and it was not unusual to be anywhere from that 20 to 28. I think the highest I remember seeing some of the bills I had was almost almost 30%. Yeah, it's New York. Yeah. Yeah, but it was all over. I mean, even smaller communities like Columbus, Ohio, and you know, and you and you think like Gainesville, Florida, you wouldn't think that something like that. But again, you walk in there, and all of a sudden, you're hit with 21 percent of taxes, a lot of different things. So, yeah. And as a traveler, they pay a lot of that expense. It's not the actual community. So yeah, it's just an interesting. Yeah, yeah. Not a good thought. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Before I I go through my agenda, would it be okay if we just dialogue because I have a few thoughts and questions that I thought it would be while we're on topic. Is that okay with you guys? I don't know. If we're I'm all in the same room. Okay. Because the uh, wait, we'll probably need you both to kind of come to the microphone. Okay. You'll be heard. Okay. Got it. All right, Jason, would that be the best approach? All right. Is that okay? Okay. Because <laughs> um, I'll give um, just an update on kind of where we're at tourism wise. So I love like love seeing the placements that that's been giving Indianola and 
um, the airtime we're getting. And I think that those are those are the things we can increase and, and definitely are going to make an impact in our community. But where I feel the gap is, and this isn't because of anything you guys are doing, I think it's it's um, just structure. So in Des Moines, you have all of the hotels, all of dining, all of anybody who wants a piece of the pie paying to play. So when people are going and looking at Des Moines, they're seeing asset for things to do. The challenge we have is our assets aren't paying to play in Catch Des Moines world. So when it comes to the brochures and the website, we're limited on, on the assets, extremely limited on the assets. So if they see an advertisement for the balloons and they're like, hey, this would be fun to do. And then they go and they research Indianola. We're going to have the activity center. I, I, I don't know if there's any dining. dining. There might be a little bit of dining. Um, campground. Or hotel. I'm looking at it. It's campground, the activity center, dog park, city, public library, skate park, and the chamber. And then there's a few other pages, but those are the top, like when you search in. You know? Yeah. So our challenge is that our assets are missing. And so part of what I was hoping to, to talk about as a group is how do we structure this where Indianola is represented as a community that can accommodate groups? You know, I, I see us being an asset to what you guys offer because you don't have rural and agritourism and kind of that farm experience in the in the Des Moines proper area, whereas that's something that we can offer the groups that you're bringing. And if those assets were in there, it would give you guys different things to leverage to, you know, and I, I know we're talking smaller scale. You guys are chasing big stuff and, and I totally know and respect that, but we would love to fill in the gaps of that medium to small stuff. And, and so I was hoping to figure out how do we, how do we solve this challenge of our assets just not being there? Because it's going to be impossible for me to go and convince everybody in this community to go join Catch Des Moines. So that I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a discussion point. I can speak to this a little bit. Um, so I just want to, you got to look at us a little bit like economic development, right? So yes, we're out chasing the big stuff, but we chase all the things too. Mm -hmm. So we look at meetings that are five people to 5,000 people. Last week we had a planner in town um, bidding on an event and specifically brought her here kind of on the fly to look at a handful of facilities. So I don't, and maybe I'm speaking out of turn to say this, I don't know that I see us impacting every single Indian business every single day. Because I we we also are a relatively small team. Um, that only has so much capacity. But what we can do is consistently go after events. You talk about the agritourism and all of that. And one of our sales girls is very specific on motor coach. So she, we have a whole page built to itineraries and things that you can do. And we attend American Bus Association and a handful of um, the motor coach groups. And then we also send leads to all the facilities and the hotel. So we're constantly sending so it, it's 300 leads. We don't track them because they don't want the girls to get caught up on what leads they're sending. I want them to be qualified. Um, so we're constantly sending leads for events. So whereas I don't think that we're going to drive, you know, somebody that's like, I want pizza, unless we're specifically calling out a partner or somebody that wants to say like, hey, I want to be in all the marketing materials for my pizza place. Like that would be an opportunity. But as a community, what we can do is really look at filling those facilities and open spaces so that we're just increasing the visitor traffic here and whether that's a sporting event or whether that's a motor coach group or whether that's you know a business that wants to hold a meeting here so I think I I understand what you're saying in terms of like we're not a chamber but what we can do is increase the people that are the foot traffic mm -hmm. yeah I can understand I can understand that aspect I think it's the struggle is, and I think we've all experienced it as you go and you search Indianola. So if somebody is wanting to visit, if a general tourist is wanting to visit, we don't have anything to offer. And I think that that's the, 
that's just the problem we're trying to solve. We're not placing that problem necessarily on you, but it's one I think collectively as a group. And you know, one of the things that Pratesh, who owns Hotel Pamir, um, had suggested at one point in time is maybe we need to just, as a, a community, our the the services that you guys provide us maybe look differently. So maybe it's not investing so that our balloons are, you're spending a ton of money on the balloons, which I'm not saying it's it's a bad thing that you are, but maybe we can shift some spend where it is some of the placements that we could have, we could pay a la carte, so to speak, and be in the households and in the Metro. How many places would you place that would actually draw visitors here, like I would, I would do, I would do basically Iowa and the surrounding states. I think, mm -hmm. I think one thing we could do is an itinerary. Let's build an itinerary that says, do you want to spend a day or half a day in in Udola? Let's do that because that goes to our motor coach groups. That's somebody that's looking for a spouse activity. That's somebody coming in early. I think we build that targeted list of give people. Right. I I would disagree on the balloon stuff because you're giving people a reason to look at Indianola. Whether the balloons are going on or not at, at that moment, you're still giving them a reason to come and say, oh, they're not happening this week, but what else is? So and I Yeah, I wasn't saying don't spend on the balloons. I don't want to come across as that. Just we have other things to offer here in our community. We do. And um, we're building that at the end of this week, we're going to be doing a tourism stakeholder meeting and we're going to be building really those itineraries. So I think we're going to have content to be able to share with you. We're, we're going to be rolling out our experience Indianola website. Um, I think it's just a matter of the struggle of it looking like if somebody is coming through Catch Des Moines and they are a group and I, I worked in the event planning space. So I used to go out and look at, uh, we're going to Nashville. What, what should we do? Where should we stay? What should we eat? And when it, it, when it comes to us wanting to attract that business and coming through you and they go out there, it, we might not look like a very sexy town at the end of the day. So I think that's why I wanted to kind of bring that up, find out what, does well, anybody have any idea? I think actually, Amanda, so from a different perspective, so I'm on the website and but again, we're trying to figure out how we can communicate better and like bring out the sexiness of Indian Island. So I I come to the page, like I go to, you know, you can see all the 18 communities, 18 or 15, and then you select your uh, community. So I come to Indianola. It brings me to a nice page where it talks about uh, the National Balloon Museum, the opera, figure park, but then you scroll to the bottom where it auto-populates for like where to stay. Um, and None of these hotels, we've got Southeast 14, Hackley Avenue, Willow Creek Avenue. Um, and then when we get to the second line, we get one. It's 501 East Trail Ridge Avenue. It's a country and a suite. It's really nice. No picture. Um, and then you go down and I don't even see Hotel Palmier because they're alphabetical. No, they're not alphabetical. Maybe they are, but regardless, the Indianola hotels are not populating at the top, like for Indianola. Does that make sense? So like our restaurants, it's probably the same thing. I don't, I don't know if people are even seeing, we have great hotels here. Um, so again, I don't think we're gonna solve that tonight and but just something maybe you guys could look at and come up with a suggestion for us. Well, I know that was- There's so much opportunity it's it's not all it's not all us trust right. me. Right. Oh no no. We take one hundred percent accountability. They have the ability on our intranet site. They can check our leads. They can, you know, they, they control those lists. There's there's so much of that. So how do we get control of that. It like they can. Every they control partner has that. that. We need to submit. Our, our so who, who in the city has control of that then? Businesses need to submit. Okay. The businesses no, we, that are listed. I mean, we can do it here, but we can also say, like, let's make a list of the things that, like, you have questions on or things that we can change. And, and again, we know it's it's two-sided. We, no, we would we never try to yeah. uh, put them all on. Is it possible to 
And this is kind of my question, Greg, to you in a sense too, was how, how do we connect and inter interconnect and work together too? And I, and, and we're kind of getting more to that depth, I think. But would it be something where your team or the folks here tonight would be able to come down and actually do maybe a session that Amanda would put together with some of the businesses here yeah, we, on how to, how to do an internet, you know, the hotel thing, how to do these kinds of things, and maybe give us a, a list of people to contact for various things that we may want to do. I mean, I, I just... That's, that's, what, that's what needs to happen. Yeah, that's what needs to happen. And Amanda and I have talked about it. We were going to do that about a month ago, and then I think both of us had conflicts. Well, well, we're we're going to do that. Right. And then we can, you know, we could sit down and then you, maybe we can form some itineraries right then and there, you know, about some of the stuff. And have the chamber members, any business that wants to come, you know, I could do that and, and yeah. work that through. I, I just, there's so many things I, I, as Amanda kind of talked about the agricultural thing here, but from a, from a sportsman's perspective in the community, there's a lot of things that people don't realize. Banner Lake State Park is the only trout fishing place in, in central Iowa. It also has a tremendous mountain biking trail that people don't know of. It's right off the Somerset Trail uh, that people could access either way and go that direction. Aquabi starting to fill now in 2023. It'll be 24, probably later this year, but in 24, and you've got all kinds of recreational opportunities. Those are the kinds of things too that we don't really talk about. But again, there are a lot of things that we can just, if we can just get together and get the businesses going, and then we can figure out the other side of it. I think that's a good idea. Sure. So if you guys have any materials that would help or could create something that could help us communicate to, I'm calling them assets because I think there's just so many um, people who could promote as tourism, um, but that could help us sell why it's important for them to be a part of Catch Des Moines. Like if you could help me with some, whether it's a marketing piece or um, we do a lunch and learn and we invite people, I think that that would be helpful. Um, you know, not every business is going to be able to afford to do that, but if you guys could help in that, especially with some of these venues that I think are their, their niche, they could be, we could do some really cool things there, um, but it's outside of the traditional scope of what they do. That would be great. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. That you're up. Okay. I just wanted to give an update. I'm, I'm my day off, by the way. So Amanda was I, moving today. So I don't have a fancy it's moving day. With me. Hopefully, I have pet control too. Today, so yes. So I don't have my fancy presentation. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an update on kind of where we're at um, from the tourism uh, website perspective as well as just the tourism initiative in general. So you guys actually should have received an invitation to uh, the meeting on Friday. Is anybody planning to come? It's okay. I, am, but, I am, but I didn't write down. Wait, I guess we would have to figure out how many of us are going. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. Any of you? No, I'm not. I, I, think, not, I was going to go. Okay, so then we'll be fine. We, we won't have a quorum, so that's... Hey, Amanda, yeah. can we get an invite to that? Absolutely, yes. It's kind of a work process. Yeah, right um, so uh, we're going to be starting this off, kicking things off with uh, uh, Travel Iowa is going to be coming and talking just about the importance of tourism in your community. They have a really good presentation I just sat through that has a lot of statistics of um, what's taking place with um, uh, with tourism in Iowa as well as group business. So we're going to be kicking things off. Um, and then we're going to, Pratesh and I are going to just go into kind of an overview of the keys to success in tourism. And I covered a little bit of that with you guys uh, in my short presentation back in December. And then um, I'm going to roll out to everybody the vision for our tourism brand here in the community, Experience Indianola, the sky's the limit. Not all of our tourism stakeholders have been introduced to this. And so this is really, really key for uh, the really the development of everything that we're doing is getting the buy-in from our stakeholders to uh, align. Um, you know, I've used the analogy several times that we have a lot of amazing instruments playing the music, but not necessarily in concert with each other. And so uh, it's important that this brand, the experience we're tying together um, across all of our tourism stakeholders. And so 
uh, we'll be rolling that out and then doing breakout sessions based upon um, what I'm calling experience types. I think there's going to be about 30, maybe 40 people in the room. Um, depends. I still have some people I'm waiting to hear from. Uh, but we're going to go and break into our group discussions. And I put homework um, in front of everybody to start really these questions that you see, um, sorry, here uh, highlighted are really, it's really just a SWOT analysis of their uh, tourism offering. And so the intention is that they come prepared, uh, having done this assessment and this inventory. And um, we'll be going around uh, in those breakout sessions and it's and sharing uh, the individual SWOT sessions or SWOT analysis that we've done. And then uh, we're gonna have group discussion talking about the commonalities. Where are there commonalities between what we're offering? Where are the collaborations? Um, where are the combinations when we're building itineraries? And then what are the collectives? And I'm thinking about marketing. Um, you know, we have lots of buckets of marketing. How do we leverage it in a smart way as a community? to get the biggest thing for our buck. And then um, we'll be doing a report out. The intention from this is following this. Uh, people are gonna be submitting their itineraries to us, content that they'd like us to share on the website with, um, with their asset. And then uh, also any imagery videos that they have uh, that would um, be essentially something we would share, potentially share on the website. Following that, um, we're going to be doing, uh, we'll of course get everything updated on the website and then we're gonna do a beta test following that. And it's from that beta test, you guys will be involved in that. I'll have Catch involved. Um, other stakeholders uh, will be involved in that beta test, feeling out, is this, is this the experience we want people uh, to, to have when they come and visit Experience Indianola online? Um, following that, we'll make any feedback and changes. And then the hope is to launch Experience Indianola June 1. This is, I put an estimated date. So there's um, obviously going to need to be a, a commitment from everybody to submit things on time. If not, we can all also roll out uh, it partially. If things aren't fully developed in certain areas, we can do that. The intention of this is that it's not just a rollout of a website. Tourism is an existence. It's a way of life. And we've got a lot of work to do to truly um, start to, to build uh, this brand within our community. One of the things I've learned over the past uh, couple months as I've gone to these tourism uh, events and I've listened to other communities and what they've done to be effective you know, tourism is not just executing at the at the um, attraction. It's also, you know, your workers at the grocery store uh, being able to answer, you know, what is there to do in this community? And they don't say nothing. We need to get our entire community engaged in this process. And so the strategy meetings that will be taking place over the course of the next year is going to be really building. How do we how do we do it well within um, our attraction or our, 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 our business itself. Um, but then how do we get people within our community to buy into this as well? So you can kind of see, sorry, I'm doing a really bad job of um, paging down, but you can see the different phases of uh, our tourism strategic planning. Uh, the hope is on that backside of this process that we will have a tourism roadmap or, or strategic plan. And that will become what we adopt as a community and um, what we move forward with now and telling the world to come and experience Indianola. Questions? Great, exciting. Cool. Yeah, we are really excited about the energy that you, now that you brought to the chamber. And I know the council has invested so much more in the chamber this year. And we're Thankful for Greg and the team to come down and, and all that you're doing for us too. But we know as a city, we need to be um, better customers, if you will. And, and so I really appreciate the council not only investing in 
these two organizations, but also investing in a communications director this coming year so that we can provide the content, we can provide some continuity and support you and support you. And really between the three of us, come up with some, some a great shell and skeleton, if you will, that each one of the businesses and the attractions and the events can participate on. And we can give them the structure they need to be successful. And that's really what it's all about. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. And good luck finishing the move, Amanda. Thank you. All right. Um, any discussion regarding the upcoming agenda items from within the regular April 3rd, 2023 City Council meeting at 7 p.m.? If not, we will um, take a break until 7 p.m.
the City of Indianola Council meeting to order for April 3rd, 2023. If we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jackie, did you call the roll? Councilmember Parker? Present. Bobby? Here. Governor? Present. Peach? Richardson? Present. Mayor Erickson? Present. Now move on to public comment. If anyone in the audience has anything they'd like to say, come now to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we're going to move on to something not on our agenda because we can't always tell Jackie everything. Um, some things have to be a surprise. Uh, Andy has a few words, but we would like to highlight uh, Jackie's recognition of completing the municipal clerk certificate. Mm -hmm. Do come up and join. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, while, while there are many important positions in city government, none is more important than the city clerk. Almost everything that happens in the city goes through the city clerk's office. When Diane Bolin, our expert city clerk of many years, retired in 2020, we wanted to make sure that her replacement would just be as capable to fill the role. We decided to make a, a requirement of the new city clerk to educate and involve themselves in the Iowa Municipal Finance Officers Association, which is the state's association of city clerks who have a certified as a municipal clerk. In order to do this, the city clerk candidate has to complete 50 hours of classwork, which includes passing tests on many different subjects and to have been in the position of city clerk for at least three years. We knew then, we know now, that we knew then, as we know now, that we found the best person for the job. Normally, the presentation of the, uh, the clerk certification is done at the spring IMFOA conference, but I told the IMFOA president that we also wanted to present it to her in front of her family and coworkers to let her know how much we appreciate her many hours of dedication and hard work, and they happily agreed. Jackie, on behalf of the city clerk, on behalf of the city of Indiana, it is my honor to present to you your Iowa Municipal Clerk certification. Yeah. Nice for once. Yes. Oh no no no. Yeah. Really short. Oh, no, it's not me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> One more. One more. Offer the help I can get. And you want to grab a picture? No, you want to grab a picture with your family? Andrew, would you mind? This way now it looks so I feel like I'm still in it. Thank you. I know. All right, moving on to item number five, the consent agenda. Um, can I get a first and second motion to approve the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. um, any items that need to be pulled? I should have asked that. I apologize. Before we do that, can we? We'd have to amend it, but that's fine. If, there, if somebody needs to, uh, I withdraw my. So I have one thing to pull. Okay, perfect. So your what <laughs> item number? I'd like to withdraw my motion. Yeah. Thank you. Withdraw the motion. Yeah, I withdraw my second. Yeah. Like to pull you one. Thank you. Um, so can I get a first and second out motion now to approve everything with the exception of E1? So move. Thank you. Um, was that a second? No, well, I'd, I'd like to discuss that. E1, we're going to come back and discuss it. No, I mean, why just E1 and not both of them? Oh, oh because one affects the other one doesn't. 
And I'm not opposed to either one. I just, I would like to add some okay. to the discussion of that. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. fine. I just wanted to. So a second? Second, yeah. Thank you. Um, any discussion on that? We have a couple liquor license renewals. Um, we'll find right away for the sidewalk and fire protection, as well as an agreement for fire protection. I said it, and then resolution improving salaries. Um, any other discussion? Becky? Councilmember Parker? Aye. 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 Uh, now I need a first and second motion approving item EI for E1. Apologize. So moved. Thank you. Um, all right. Gwen. Okay. So I don't know what the correct procedure is here, Doug, but I would just like to, I think the rub with this always comes about parking. And so I would like to amend or whatever procedure to address uh, those who park all day on the square. Um, whether it's county employees, business owners, business employees, whatever it is. So that was what I would like to accomplish here. So we have clear direction for the staff for this to be addressed. So I think ultimately our issue in lies with county employees who are utilizing parking on the square and parking all day long. So I think it's it, probably an opportunity where we can direct this back to then to meet with supervisors. I know we've tried in the past uh, diligently to work on that very hard. Um, I think we're all committed to continue working on it, but maybe get something. Well, I talked to the Square Commission. I listened to the last meeting and they have always have quite a bit of discussion about that. And um, their suggestion has been to implement, go back to a four hour parking. And the pushback always is enforcement. And so I said that to her and or to the commission chair, and she said, don't worry about enforcing. There's always someone willing to call about it. So she, they, as a commission, think that that would solve the problem. And then I think those who are concerned about any spots being taken up by a patio would be less concerned because two spots is only 10% of the parking that's available on that side of the square. If you don't have any daytime employee, you know, daytime employees blocking, it, it could get up to 30% of the spots that are taken if there are people who are habitually parking in front of the business or parking in front of the courthouse, that kind of thing. So I think it would solve that problem. This is a five-year contract. It's not going to come up for discussion again, but there's we're, we're pitting neighbor against neighbor here on, on this. And I think we have to really work to harmonize um, our business owners and make sure that that they're all working together and we're giving them the tools they need to, to work together and work in harmony. So that is what I would like to see happen. So basically giving direction to the staff to uh, review what it would need to change the parking on the square to a four hour to run it through if it, if it requires planning commission. I'm not exactly sure what Charlie out here. I'm not sure either. When the, the square commission. Yeah, it looks like yeah. yeah. It previously was a two hour and I mean, three, three hour, yeah. but I know we get into some, some legalities now that you can't chalk tires. And so I don't know how that's bad. It's, and I know it's, it's a continued problem and conversation. We probably just need to, it gets nice. It seems like every spring we start to talk about how far it is. The, the commission seemed to feel that it would almost enforce itself. Um, that that's the suggestion they've made and then always the response is for obvious reasons that it's difficult to enforce which it is but they're not concerned about that they think once it's in place it will well maybe on the honor system be enforced at least to the benefit of the businesses effectively okay Is that done all right okay any more discussion um so not necessarily just about this but that Item. It's more of just having that conversation to right. start that. Um, Do you know a timeline on that? Like how long something like that might take? I know, but probably we'll be back tomorrow and I'd be happy to put email together and let the council know with okay. procedures would be in place to, to bring it back, have it considered by the appropriate boards and then by the council. Yeah, I would assume fairly quick. I mean, yeah. we already had it once, so yeah. the language is there, just change it from three to four and... I just don't want it to be three months from now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be three meetings unless we unless we 
peel it or uh, set it aside and do it all in one. But anyway, so, so how do you stop an employee from the county from going out and moving your car at lunch and move to another spot? And then you run into the exact same issue, really. We don't. We could do three hours again. I mean, there there was there was contention on that. The suggestion from the commission was four hours, and I agree. I think you're right. You know, there is nothing to stop them. Um, continued conversations with the county board of supervisors. I mean, it's just a courtesy thing. It's just due unto others. You know, I mean, we don't. I no one should want to get in the way of the profitability of our businesses. It's just stubbornness. Great. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jackie? Councilmember Dalby? Aye. Schroeder? Aye. Richardson? Aye. Parker? Aye. Moving on into Council Reports, I need a first and second motion to receive and follow the February 2023 Treasurer's Report. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Aye. Opposed? Central Iowa Regional Trans Transportation Planning Alliance report. Uncle Member Richardson. Thank you. I'll try to be very brief. Um, the meeting talked about a couple of things with $250,000 available for safety plan grants. Um, I'm sure AP was on the, on the call as well, so I'm sure that uh, he's passed that information along to whoever needs to um, be interested in that in our, in our city. Um, Surf to dues has not increased since 2007, currently at 13 cents per capita. It, they were talking about perhaps a, a raise on that, so we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Um, no action on those kinds of things. Uh, we did receive, there's been some additional funds that have been moved to, over to um, the holes that we have for those that are dispersed for some of the roadway projects. Uh, just keeps increasing some of the money that we get, which is great. It takes less time for us to recoup that money we're going to put into Hillcrest. So I think we're going to be down after this year, down to uh, uh, 2.61 by the end of 24. So two, two years, six months. So that'll be all. And then we'll start building again from there. So that's my report. Thank you. Item seven, the mayor's report. I have a proclamation uh, proclaiming Arbor Day. Go ahead and read that. Uh, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for planting of trees. Whereas this holiday called Arbor Day is first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and in the world. And whereas trees can be reduced, the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuels for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas Indianola has been recognized as the Tree City USA, of the National Arbor Day Foundation desires to continue its tree planting ways. Now, therefore, I, Stephanie Erickson, Mayor of the City of Indianola, do hereby proclaim April 28, 2023 as Arbor Day in the City of Indianola, and I urge all citizens to support efforts to care for our trees and woodlands and to support our city's community forestry programs. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees, to gladden the hearts, and promote the well-being of present and future generations. Dated this third day of April, 2023. Right. Um, a couple of events that happened in the last few weeks. I took the Mayor's Youth Council on a capital tour down at the state capitol. We met with Representative Brooke Bowden and Representative Eddie Andrews. And then they had a tour to the top of the capitol, uh, the very top, out to the dome. They thought that was cool. Something they didn't get in fifth grade, so they were excited about that. Um, a lot of thanks to the sustainability committee for a great fair this past weekend. Uh, last week, we met to discuss the mutual partnership uh, with the YMCA and the community has been very supportive and it's been very positive. So looking forward to that um, moving forward with all of that. And while we miss the absence of Heather here at our table, we are so excited to continue to work with her um, on this project. And then with the Mayor's Youth Council, we will be taking a tour of Simpson College this week. So 
I would just say that uh, the sustainability fair on Saturday was pretty good success. They had a lot of, a lot of kids there. So it was nice. And yeah. kudos to Earth and Rec. Um, yeah, absolutely. Cotton candy is definitely sustainable, I think. So <laughs> that was smart. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. That's all I have. So we will move on to item eight, public consideration and old business. East Hillcrest Avenue reconstruction project. I need a first and second motion to open the public hearing regarding the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimates of cost for the East Hillcrest Crest Avenue reconstruction project. Move. Thank you. And uh, Jackie? Councilmember Dalby? Aye. Schroeder? Aye. Richardson? Aye. Aye. Right. Um, e. <laughs> Can we pull this up? Did I ask a um, different question? It's up there. Do we know how long 14th will be closed at Hillcrest? There's different. Yeah. And I think AP will close. Oh, that's in here. Perfect. Well, no, the current one. It's talking about currently. Yeah, right? the current one that is closed. The industrial park. It's just paved now, so I mean, it's just going to be. They've been, they've been working quick on it. Yeah. yeah. I went down there. So on that one, they have finished the sewer repair. The sewer repair is done and the pavement is also pulled, but the inspections are still ongoing. So we don't want to open it up and then realize this other sewer repair that still needs to be updated. Yeah. Sorry. Do you think like a week or so? Sure. Hopefully in a week. This crossed uh, two weeks. Yeah, well, two weeks is positive. So yeah, so the plan was to close it for three weeks. We were hoping they can do it faster. But we're currently doing the sewer inspections, and hopefully, there's there's a few locations where I know Rick Graves had uh, questions. We have inspected the televised videos of them. We want them repaired before it's open. They got a absolutely cure. cure. And I mean, they've been nailing it out. So I think it's just great. I, I think the only people you really need to be into is those who cut that way to go to school. So sure. um, but not a big problem at all. Thanks for keeping them quickly. And it's I can go over the project that was there. This is part of the council approved uh, uh, project for Hillcrest Avenue, where roughly you know, the miles, but it's from 4th Street to 14th Street, this is where we are converting it from two lane to three lane configuration, which is um, 37 feet wide with new curb and gutter. I'm just going to open up this slide. It's me. Oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's the project was estimated roughly at around five point four six million dollars. Uh, the engineers estimate on the project. Uh, Iowa DOT doing the bid letting for this project. They have opened bids. March twenty first, I believe, we received four bids, and uh, of that, Vanderpool was the low bid. They were roughly about three hundred sixty thousand dollars below the engineers estimate. So. 6.7 percent below the engineer's estimate. Um, if the council approves this or approves this or awards this project, then the late start is on April 24th of this year, with roughly about 260 working days. Uh, we are we are estimating that this project will be completed by summer of 2025. Uh, with that being said, this this entire project will be broken down in multiple construction phases where, where it will at least have four to five phases. The phases are there in the construction plan, which is subject to change depending on um, the construction contractor's input and um, what we find out in the field, you know, but with that, the, the purpose of these multiple construction phases was to ensure we are not denying access to any of the um, owners located in that construction corridor. So, um, this project is the, the items that is presented is public hearing on the final approval of the plans, then awarding the bid to 
and also approving a 250,000 construction contingency for uh, for un unforeseen construction. So, if you want, uh, so from your comments there, then it sounds like there there's going to be a, a way or open that part of the road is going to be open some of the time then or not. Is but how's that going to get? Especially the businesses on the south side of Hillcrest. Have. So when, so it, as I said, it will be broken down in multiple phases. The first phase, one of the phases is from 4th Street to 7th Street. Okay. And then you have 7 to 9th. And then you have 9 to the trail, trail to 14. So it will be broken down depending on what the construction contract. So there will be a single phase where 14th will not be, 14th at Hillcrest will be blocked. All right. They will have to come commute right. to. Oh, yeah. Okay, but uh, the businesses on the south side, <laughs> excuse me, the comments you made was that you're not going to interrupt those, and so I'm guessing that those phases will be timed so that they'll have some kind of an access then to the businesses. All businesses will yeah. have. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. <clears throat> I really appreciate these detour maps and the construction plans, too. It's very clear. Yeah. Excited to put this together. <laughs> Even better, it came in under bid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's local. Yep. yep. I'm excited to see it stay stay <laughs> down. Uh, only local, but impacted by the project. So vested interest to in seeing it go yeah. quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. We had four bidders. Is that correct? Okay. Three others outside of the community, or were they? No, the second bidder was roughly sixty thousand higher than the local. They are not from the community. Uh, the third bidder was from the okay. okay they had some competitive bids and some yes bids. absolutely second project we've had come in under budget good okay. all right thank you anyone wishing to speak on this matter matter can now come to the lectern and state your name and address for the record all right i need a first and second motion to close the public hearing Moved. Second. Uh, Becky? Councilmember Schroeder? Aye. Richardson? Aye. Parker? Aye. Dalby? Aye. Aye. Need a first and second motion on a resolution approving the plan, specification, forms of the contract, and estimates of cost for the East Hillcrest Avenue reconstruction project. I'll move. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Becky? Councilmember Schroeder? Aye. Richardson? Aye. Parker? Aye. Dolby? Aye. 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 Motion on a resolution awarding the contract to Vanderpool Construction, Inc. for East Hillcrest Avenue Reconstruction Project. Mm -hmm. The moot? I got that. Jackie? Councilmember Schroeder? Aye. Richardson? Aye. Parker? Aye. Dolby? Aye. Non discussion and possible action on distribution of home serve utility line warranty program letters. Council, I can uh, touch on this. Uh, as you recall, we uh, are uh, partners with um, Home Serve Utility Service Line Warranty Program. They send out mailings uh, to homeowners to let them know that there's an insurance program out there that will allow them to, uh, to have any problems with their service lines. Nah. Home to the main that this warranty program will help them uh, with any of those repairs. Uh, we did suspend the mailing. They were doing mailing in spring and the fall, and we decided that after a number of years that they've reached about everybody that they could, and so we suspended it for about a year. They said that they they're wondering if we wanted to send out another mailing. So that's the that's what get some direction. That problem with it, I think pretty good system, pretty good service. People want to take advantage of it. The only question I had, did they send that out on Indian old letterhead? Yes, yes, they do. And why would they not send that out on their own letterhead? Uh, it, it does have, I think it does have the it does have their logo on it, but it also includes the city's logo to show that we are in partner with. Because I had some people ask me if it was something the city was doing and, and why we were doing that or what 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 the situation was. Um, that would be my only concern is that 
maybe it's it's somewhere in that letter if they're gonna if you're gonna do it um, that it states that it's a private entity that's involved. But we you know we are working with them in some way, shape, or form. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, you get some pushback from local agents too. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I did too. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a I'll take a look again. We'll take a look at again at the letter to see how it's worded. If I remember, it's kind of it looks like a photocopied logo. It, it yeah. does. It's a, black and white. It looks yeah. terrible. It's, it's not the best logo. Uh huh. Yeah, that they send it on. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not us. No, no. It's, what they're it's what sending they're is right, the right. quality right. is very poor. Get a better quality version. I really have a desire. I would rather. But that's just me personally. I don't have a vote, so I'll let you for not have the logo. I would rather it personally not. It's not in color, it's black and white, it's on the envelope on the outside that it appears it's coming from the city. Um, it does. I mean, I got some pushback too. I think it's fine, but I did get pushback from a little agent and I do get pushback or not pushback, but questions from people who said it looks like the city, but then this isn't really the city logo. So it looked, you know, I, mm -hmm. it, I don't know. Well, my only thought was, can they put their own logo at the top, and then we have a logo down at the bottom that says, you know, they're working in conjunction with us. Figure out some way to make it so it's not, not quite that. That we looks like it's from the city. We probably calls to the city office asking about it. Yeah, um, I'll check with them. Uh, that's, I mean, this is the program that they normally have. They, um, they have a sponsorship with the cities um, because the cities normally would get uh, some type of. Uh, benefit from it, you know, like a center or two off a uh, question for policy. We decided to forego that royalty uh, off that in order for the premium cost to be down for the homeowner. So we don't receive anything from that. So I'll I'll check with them to see if there's some way that you know they're low right the top and right. maybe the amount that they send. I know, for instance, like my household, we, we got four um, and like bring last year. And that's when we brought it up because I was like, I've gotten, and I don't know if so it's just, you know, mistakes in my address got printed multiple times, but I got four other people had gotten quite a few too. So, yeah, I know they were sending them out in the spring and the fall. So it was quite a bit. I thought it was maybe talk about some of the changes, figure out what you want to do and bring it back to us. That'd be my, my thought. Perfect. I can check with uh, check the letters. Sure. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Moving you know, on to new business, I need a first and second motion on a resolution improving the flat survey for Matt and Thomas of Civil Design Advantage on behalf of Warren County for property located behind 1104 Parkway. Right. So moved. Second. And discussion. All right. No discussion. I'm sorry that they were just uh, taking out a small parcel. I mean, up. I mean, were they going to build on that parcel, or is it just behind someone else's property? Yeah, just... The lot behind the eleven oh four. It's a very odd shaped parcel. It is. Yeah, it is. I understand they've been maintaining it this time. Yeah, it was kind of a technicality that they. Uh, Jackie. Councilmember Richardson. Aye. Parker. Aye. Shelby. Aye. 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 Um, I need a first and second motion resolution approving an application under the amended and restated 1998 citywide urban uh, revitalization plan. So moved. Um, any discussion? Jackie? Councilmember Dalby? Aye. Schroeder? Aye. Richardson? Aye. Parker? Aye. Um, I need a first and second motion on a resolution. <laughs> Providing for the notice of intent to fill a council at large vacancy by appointment. Moved. Right. And discussion. So, per state code, we have to fill the vacancy within um, 60 days by either um, deciding an appointment or a special election. The replacement will complete the current term that ends at the end of this year, which is approximately eight months remaining. Um, the council has to publish a notice of intent to appoint um, between four and 20 days from the date of the appointment. So council will need to determine the date of the appointment. Um, if council wants us to, we can publish an application of interest like we have before in the past. Um, some suggested item on, items to the application would be personal information like their um, contact information, occupation, length of time that they've lived in town, 
and if they've been an elected official before. Ask them for an essay of no more than 500 words about why they want to be a council member, why they're qualified for the position, and how they'll contribute to moving in a positive way. And a resume or brief bio that includes a listing of their work experience and civic involvement. And then a statement certifying that they're legal, legally eligible to be appointed to this office. And so we would ask council to determine the due date of those applications as well. And we'll put the application on our website along with other relevant information that might be helpful to someone considering the position, like the city codes and policies, um, information about being a council member, and then information about Indianola, like our strategic plan, comp plan, and financial information. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you guys choose to appoint somebody rather than have a special election, we need to determine the date that that appointment will be made, determine the process by which you want to do that. If you want to um, have us collect applications, and then conduct an interview during a council meeting and then appoint somebody at a council meeting. We can do that. Council will need to determine the deadline for accepting the applications. And then once that deadline has been met, we'll immediately forward all of those applications to you. Um, the interviews during the council meeting can also include a brief presentation or speech by the applicant, if you would like, about why they're interested in it and why they'd be the best choice for the position. Um, a possible timeline would be to publish the notice next Tuesday and then have applications due by April 26th at 4 p.m. and then have the interviews and appointment during the May 1st council meeting. That is entirely up to council. Any of that can be changed. If you don't have a special meeting, we can do that as well. Um, information on a special election, you guys do have the right to choose to fill the vacancy by a special election. Citizens can also file a petition requesting that and between 14 days after the publication of notice to appoint or within 14 days after the appointment is made. Um, there are fees that we will have to pay that are assessed by the county auditors, and those that amount will vary. There's a lot of things that go into that. Between four and ten. I like the timeline. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that at all. I think the timeline is well yeah. too. The only thing I was thinking, if we are actually doing interviews and have the person have an opportunity to do a short speaking of uh, part in that interview wondering do we really need to have the essay portion and and i guess i'm asking the question of the council here we did the interviews during a work session oh, i mean i'd rather do that yeah, yeah i would so too. we could do it at that may first work session and and i kind of think if we come up with the questions that every time you get in here right but I, I would like to give the questions ahead of time to all candidates uh you know these may be the list of questions we ask but it doesn't mean we're going to ask them that but it, it gives them more time to study maybe if there's something they you know want to take a look at or something um yeah and i i do think what i think i'm not opposed i just said yeah and i think the, and the reason i say that is might help us form questions too very true yeah well, i know i mean i think that might help us to get a feeling for her based on what they say, you know, what, how involved they've been or whatever. I mean, I think it might be easier for us. And I do think in, in, in doing that with the mayor, if I remember right, we kind of had, kind of had questions that were asked of everybody the same the question. Was, and so that way everything is, is on. But I don't think we gave them the questions ahead of time. No, we, we hadn't. Huh? I just feel like sometimes, you know, when you're so nervous and you're up there, um, make it seem a little bit easier. I don't know, Ben, you've been in that hot seat when we're all back here and you're right there, so. I guess my next question, too, would be, what do we want to do if we have a large number? If we only have two, that makes it easier, three. But if we had six or seven, do we really want to go through six or seven interviews? Is that, you know, how do we approach that if we get a large number of applications? That, that, at that point, we probably have to have a special meeting, I would think, and work it down to three or four. Adam, then mm -hmm. 26, that would... Doesn't give us a lot of time for May 1st. Yeah. We have to move pretty quick. Yeah. Which... What say? Good. I mean, we could, Good. if we no, if we okay. just kind of plan that if we get a lot. I mean, We're so much fun. Of course, lots of people are going to... I would think. Yeah. yeah. Come on, it's so much fun, guys. Apply. Yeah. Um, so... I, I like the timeline. I like pretty much everything. And I, I guess we'll see April 26, how many we have. And if we've got a. 
Yeah. And if we start to get a large number ahead, I mean, you know, we could kind of if gauge it. If we all of a sudden get four right away, thinking, okay, we might want to plan a special meeting on the 27th. Then. Okay. Perfect. Good plan. All right. Um, any other? We would have to appoint by what, May 29th? Just so we'd want to do it before that, the 26th, probably that Friday. Well, okay. just to reiterate too, uh, that technically that position then ends at the end of the calendar year, or they, that person could run again, but a lot of applicants, theoretically, they can run as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Finding time to be in local government. Jackie, would you call roll call? Councilmember Richardson? Aye. Parker? Aye. Dolby? Aye. Schroeder? Aye. Uh, moving on into other business discussion and direction on sewer rates. Excited to come out of that. No, it's on my stuff. I don't okay, uh, Mayor Council. Um, it, just wanted to bring this before you uh, to get some direction. Uh, you know, Mike Maloney was here last time to give you the information on uh, sewer center sewer cash flow and the need for increasing the rates. Um, we need it for a couple of different reasons. We have a much larger a new wastewater treatment plant that uh, needs going to be going into operation. So we have increased costs there, uh, not only operations, but insurance. And uh, we'll have another um, staff member coming on, the director. But also, we need to make sure that um, we're legally bound and we want to make sure that we are able to cover the 1.1 debt service coverage with the revenue. Um, so what we're looking at, uh, what uh, Mike had presented to us is increasing the base rate for residential user fees to $25. And um, that covers the base rate covers the first thousand gallons. And then after that, 1150 per thousand gallons. And then uh, we also have in our ordinance, uh, high strength users, those who um, have a load that's uh, higher than the limits for normal residential use, uh, they uh, pay a rate of 1.25% higher. So I guess what we're, what we're asking is, we were going to be bringing that ordinance to you at the next council meeting. Uh, ordinances go through uh, separate readings before they're passed normally, unless the council decides to wait the second and or third readings, um, but we'd like to get this in, in place um, prior to the beginning of next fiscal year so we can start um, start that on July 1st. Can you back up one slide, Jackie, or whoever's running the sheet here? Um, so essentially, what you're looking at here is an increase in about $12 a month increase for average residential. Yes. 44 a year. Is there any, I know, and I apologize for not asking this question ahead of time because I just thought of it as I was watching and listening here. Is there any thought about, I'm kind of thinking here of people that live in a single home, mostly, I don't know, but there's young and, and old. I'm kind of wondering if it would make any sense somewhere along the line to maybe look at increasing the base rate gallons from maybe 1,000 to 1,500 and what that would do to the numbers. But I didn't ask that question ahead of time or anything, so you'd have the numbers available. But I, I know there's a number of, we just had a water increase. I mean, you just increase the water rates. So now, now we need to be where we need to be money-wise on this facility. That's, that's a requirement. Just kind of keep thinking about folks that are living on their own some of the folks over age of 65. Most people got their assessment letters today, so that was a, it's a painful day in Indianola, I'll tell you that. Um, Good thing we're elevating. <laughs> Absolutely. I do we're wonder, elevating. though, I get it, the average is 4,000, but I will say this, that, that I have I have rural water at, at my office, and 
I've never used more than a thousand gallons. Now, again, I, I get a lot taking showers. We, we do fill water tanks. I mean, we do, and I've never, never gotten over the minimum. So I really truly believe that most, most elderly people or single, you know, the, the fixed income they probably aren't using that many more anyway. Yeah, you know, I think I've been kind of keeping track of ours and just my wife and I, and we run, you know, we do a lot of laundry and stuff and I don't water the yard or anything like that, but we do run about 3,000 gallons a month. Mm -hmm. My wife and I are just about 2,500. To say that's where we're yeah, 25 to three is what we do. I've yeah. been watching it too. <laughs> but I, I just was, just a thought, you know, and it, maybe what the best thing to do is if we're, if, and I, and again, I don't want to be in a situation where we're having to raise this every year substantially because of the, if we need to do it, let's do it, do it now. But at the same time, I'd like to kind of look at what would happen if we did raise the base rate to us to a certain gallon each. I, I'd just be curious. I can, I can check with Mike and see if he can. It doesn't have to happen now. I'm okay with this. Is this what we need to do? Is what we need to do? But I think if we can look at it, if we're going to do rate increases in the future, maybe it's something we can look at. That's a suggestion. Any other? The thing Mike kept reminding us was that it was artificially low for so long. I think we just have to. Well, know. and unfortunately, we probably shouldn't have held back the last couple of years, but right. just because things were going well, right. we did. We probably, you know, hindsight's 2020, but it is what it is. Next slide, please. I said the, the key for me right here is that very, uh, we've got to be at that bond, 110 for our bond issues. So we've got to get there. I mean, we, we're kind of in a bind and we got to be that to that point. And, and I understand that. So. Right. Okay. The other direction. Yep. Right. Thank you. Thank you. City managers report with Ben Reeves. Actually, everything I was going to cover has been covered already. Is there any questions that the council has? Easy for you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you All right. I need a first and second motion. We have a joint meeting. Just a reminder. Oh yes, on Wednesday. Right. No, on Monday. Monday. I'm sorry. The ten. Not the six. The ten. I knew that. Yeah, that's at six o'clock, correct? Oh. Six was the last year's oh, meeting okay. that we all got like an invite to. So okay. yes, uh, it's not five thirty. It's six o'clock. I think they are planning on meeting at 5.30 yeah. to take care of some of their own. We need to come at six. Yes. Okay. Was there an email sent out on that? Yeah, and I had it written down for 5.30, so that's why. It, it, it did originally go out, and there and then there was some confusion. That's right. It was from Mike Rosga. Yes, that's right. That was. Yeah, and then they wondered if the email was old from last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I can forward it to you too, Ron. Um, yep. I missed it too. And I had 6.30 on my calendar, so. Good thing we're still clarifying oh, everything we are right now. Um, all right. I need a first and second motion to enter into closed session in accordance with Iowa Code Section 21.51J to discuss the purchase of sale of peculiar real estate only where premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price the governmental body would have to pay for that property or reduce the price the governmental body would receive for that property. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Jackie. Councilmember Richardson. Aye. Parker. Aye. Dalby. Aye. Schroeder. Aye. Uh, take a, a quick two minute break. We've got three. Oh, we do. Adjourn after that. Yes, and we will adjourn immediately after. Thanks, John. Yeah, no, I just. No, I